Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Today, there's going to be a pair of wide receivers looking to make big plays on the field. It's Doug Baldwin's Seahawks going up against Decker's Titans. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, thank you, Larry. We are across the Cumberland River from downtown Nashville at Nissan Stadium in Tennessee. The whole of downtown Nashville likely still reverberating with the sounds of the Titans taking the field a moment ago. They're ready for football as their Titans are set to match up with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. And we say hi again, everybody. Brandon Gordon here as we count down to kickoff. I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, Larry pointed out in the open, we've got a pretty good matchup of wide receivers here this afternoon, don't we? And those guys have such a big impact on the game nowadays. We know it's a throwing game, but the guys who can go up and get it, the guys who can break tackles after the catch and make bigger plays, oh, yeah, they love spotlight as well. They want the football. They want the attention. It's an Indian summer afternoon. Perfect conditions for football, and off we go on EA Sports. That'll be taken in the end zone, and he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks take the field. They, they're one and one. They did beat San Francisco, but they've had trouble scoring just one touchdown in two games. What do you make of the offense there so far? I think it all comes back to the offensive line again. They've been trying to get that right for the last couple of seasons. Lost some people in preseason. Still retooling, trying to come together as a coordinated group so that they can run the ball a little bit more, although the rookie Chris Carson is playing pretty well there. But they've got to pass protect and give Russell Wilson more time to get the ball downfield. Here's Thomas Rawls with his first carry. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They go play action here on first down. And the grab made by Doug Baldwin. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. If this Tennessee team is going to be one to watch, if they're going to be a factor in 2017, that pass defense has to improve. They were number 30 last year. As a team that should be more comfortable with the schemes that they're playing, as well as being able to add a few new ones because they've stayed stable on the defensive side and their staff. So what they're teaching now, they've learned before. They should be able to tune that up a little bit and get better play on the back end in order to improve that number from 2016. On first and 10, it's Wilson. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Ten more there and another first down. Well, I mean to jump in on you, partner, but they didn't waste any time getting downfield, did they? I mean, a nice big play there. Three plays, three successful plays in plus territory. Now this defense on its heels a bit. It seems like they had something targeted there, doesn't it? It's like, okay, we've got a matchup we like coming right out of the gate. Let's go ahead and get right to it. So the offense has it first and ten. Now a toss. This is Rawls. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. So the myth has been shattered. Every cornerback in the league is not just a cover corner. Some of them will stick their nose in there and make plays exactly as we just saw there. A big loss suffered by the offense after that nice tackle.
They go again with Rawls. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. It'll be a pickup of 13 on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it, and boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup, and guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. The first carry now. This is Lacey. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. So important that you keep an opening drive going because you want to set the tempo right away. And you and I both know you can't set a tempo if you're putting the football away. Yeah, maybe early. Don't want to be too over the top. But you're right, big third down conversion. First and goal. They'll try to pound it in with Lacey. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. And here's the starting offensive unit for Seattle. In music, the Seattle sound is distinctive. In the NFL, it's the Seattle running game, usually ranked in the top five in the NFL. It fell to number 25 in 2016. And they're trying to revamp the offensive line and find a bell cow running back in order to get things moving again. So they're on the five-yard line here, second down and goal. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. We look now at the defensive starters for Tennessee, and this group pretty good effort in week two holding Jacksonville to 16 points. A concerted team effort too because they knew the rookie runner Leonard Fournette had put 100 yards up in the season opener and their victory right out of the gate for Jacksonville against Houston. So they said well, we got to stop this guy. Everyone in the box make sure he has no place to run the football and that helps shut down the Jacksonville attack. This opening drive has taken him to the two but now they come up on a third and goal. They snap it at one. Now Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. They may be snapping a ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. So on fourth down, Pete Carroll is going to call out his field goal unit from the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And the Seahawks grab a 3-0 lead. So it's our visitors who make the first dent in the scoreboard as they get three here on the initial drive of the ball game. Yeah, it's hard to say who actually won that opening drive. On the one hand, anytime you can come in as a road team and get an early lead, you're going to be thrilled. But at the same time, to have the ball as deep in enemy territory as they did and come away with only three, that's got to be a little bit of a disappointment. Now after the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Marcus Mariota trotting out there with the rest of the Tennessee offense. They put up 37 points against Jacksonville Week 2, Charles. Marcus threw for 215 yards, a touchdown, also an interception. Yeah, nice bounce-back win for the Titans, though, led by Marcus Mariota. Because remember, opening day was against Oakland, and we remember the matchup with Derek Carr, and Carr's Raiders got them that day. 
Well, guess what? Coming up for the Tennessee Titans? Well, they got Seattle. A visit from Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. And yes, he plays against the Seahawks defense, but he's also playing against that opposite quarterback, Russell Wilson. Can he bring his game up to that level and give his Titans a, vi a chance for victory? I think he can. Now here's the first carry for DeMarco Murray. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. No other way to say it, but it was an off year for DeMarco Murray in Philadelphia and Chip Kelly's offense. Didn't really seem to be a fit, but when he went to Tennessee playing for Mike Malarkey, boy, did he fit in a big way. Finished third in the NFL in rushing behind Ezekiel Elliott and a late charging Jordan Howard. He was ahead of Howard much of the year. I remember Coach Malarkey in preseason said, DeMarco Murray's my number one back. He'll get plenty of carries here, and he did. Second down, Mariota. And he's got Rome. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. at the 45-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Let's discuss the running backs for Tennessee as we see their starters here on offense. You got DeMarco Murray had the hamstring issue. That opened the door for Derrick Henry. He had a pretty good game in week two, 92 yards and a touchdown. He was ready to assume that role because of the work he put in in the offseason. He knows the head coach, Mike Malarkey, wants DeMarco Murray to be the lead back and take most of the carries. That's who he trusts. But that didn't mean that Derrick Henry spent the offseason not working out. He got it together, worked on his game, worked on his craft, and when his number was called, he was there in a big way in their Week 2 victory. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Play fake to Henry. Now Mariota. He locates Walker complete. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. A Titan first down, Mariota to Walker. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. So here we go, first and ten now. They'll run the counter with Murray. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. The Seahawks, here's their defensive lineup. Some players may change, some coaches may change, but head coach Pete Carroll is still there, which means that Seattle's defense is always going to be a threat to be the top-ranked defense in the NFL. They ranked number five in 2016, and they continue to do it with a tremendous secondary and great pass rushers up front able to utilize their skills to create matchup problems for offenses. And here comes play number six on this drive. That was second down run for Murray. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. 
So he runs it for one yard, then no gain. I don't know that you go back to that well here on third down. Yeah, I don't know that you do as well, but if you want to get the ball to him, if you want him to have it, maybe you get him into space and throw it to him. Off play action to Henry. Here's Mariota. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Mike Bennett in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. In his 10th year, here's Brett Kern to punt this one. Back deep for the Seahawks, the all-pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. So Seattle set to get the ball here on offense. Uh, let's discuss the running back situation. Eddie Lacy didn't even dress in week two. Chris Carson, the rookie out of Oklahoma State, he's kind of stolen the show there, hasn't he? Yeah, they got on him late in the draft process. Pete Carroll saw him on tape, really liked him. They took him in the seventh round. Don't forget Thomas Rawls. Mm. Had that terrific season a couple of years ago. Been battling injuries since then, coming back from an ankle injury. He only had, what, four yards in the last yeah, ball game? Yeah, five carries. Yeah, so, you know, Chris Carson now carrying the load for Seattle at present time. We'll see what they do moving forward. They start on the ground with Rawls. And he'll lose yardage here. Back to the 15. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up in run support, made a big-time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. Second down, Rawls. And some space here. Finding room at the 30. And they finally get him down, but not before he reaches the 34. A big run that time by Rawls. 51 yards on the ground. Terrific run from one of the fastest backs in the game today. A guy who keeps defensive coordinators up at night, no doubt. Remember when we were meeting with the D coordinator before the game and all he talked about was run fits, making sure our guys were in the right place so there were no creases? They missed their fits, didn't they? Yeah, there was no fit there. The only fit was at the end when he threw his headset down after that big run. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. First down carry, it's Lacey. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just big, a big man, big, a huge big, man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> <laughs> and able to get him down, but he does reach the five. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. 
Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Rawls, the lone man in the backfield. And he's across the chalk, into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Thomas Rawls, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. And he was excellent on that drive. He deserved to be the one to get across the chalk. Oh, I agree with you totally. A workhorse on the drive. And how about that last decisive run to punch it in? Blair Walsh on to attempt the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays. And it's Thomas Rawls who finishes it off with a touchdown run. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. Here's Eric Weems now on the return. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. Play fake here on first down. Over the middle complete. It's Smith. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. And before they can get settled in here, time expires. On the first quarter of action, plenty of scoring here already. We're back to Nashville right after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With the former volunteer Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. It's the Titans with the football here to begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. midfield and inside the 45. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? The 
They go back to Murray on first down. There he goes inside the 30. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. But other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy is going to keep getting the football, and that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. Play action now, Mariota. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Pass interference, defense. So the pass incomplete in the end zone, but contact and pass interference. And now where does the ball get placed? Yeah, at the one-yard line. One-yard line. They gave up excellent real estate on that one. That's going to work really, really well for the guys who throw it. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll try to run it in, going option right. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. the wrong direction call that a loss of five yards on the play and that'll make it third and goal every time we leave a seattle game i have the pa guy's voice in my head tackle by bobby wagner <laughs> well he had 167 tackles last year not only led the nfl that was the most in a single season in seahawk history and how about this his second all pro nomination this guy is sideline to sideline end zone to end zone making plays Defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Here's Ryan Suckup for the Titan field goal. And Suckup will put this one right through. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So three points is the outcome, but probably not what they're looking for given the drive that they were on. Yeah, things were looking good. You had it first and goal, but then the offense sputters a bit, and they're forced to settle for a field goal. Suck it now, set to kick it off, following the main field goal. Fielded about a yard deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And we move our focus to Thomas Rawls. He's in a zone, second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, 
that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has, and that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a 1,000-yard mark. I'm wondering, since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games, maybe we need to up that a little. The drive begins with a run by Rawls. And oh, a little spin cycle. Room to run now. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. on first down and nearly picked off there almost intercepted instead second down oh man that was close the opportunity to change momentum big play right in his hands unable to come down with it a sigh of relief no doubt on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground The play fake to Rawls. Wilson. And the Titan defense steps up here and down he goes. Brian Arakpo from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. Partner, I know the ball security is preached like crazy, but every now and then you've got to know when to get rid of the football and save a little bit of yardage if you're a quarterback. Because now if you're the offensive coordinator, what does it do if it was third and 10 versus third and much longer as it is now? Yeah, it changes everything in terms of play calling and the pressure you might expect to face on the very next down. Had to throw the ball away and save the yardage. He didn't get it done. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. From the shotgun, Wilson. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before loss yarded. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for loss yardage. On is the punter, Ryan, to send this one away. And this will be taken at the 13. <laughs> A very good return that time. 18 yards. And it'll be Titan football. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. They go with Murray again. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker. And now it's third down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Titans on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and three. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And yeah, this is caught, but I don't think he stayed in bounds. No, he didn't. It's incomplete. The throw took him past the boundary, and it's fourth. 
Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. On his Kern, the punter, to send this one away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. The Seahawks offense now. They get ready to come back onto the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. They stay on the ground. Rolls again. And space opened up a bit. He's able to take this up past the 10. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick. He's been decisive. And he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. The Seahawks on third down, just one for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They run with a power back, Rawls. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 11, he goes down. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. From our vantage point, that was just one bad play by the offensive line in a series of really good ones tonight. But I know that they're going to be really ticked off. It's a lot like a baseball pitcher losing a no-hitter late in the game. Here's John Ryan now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away. And boy, it's another boomer. <laughs> Great coverage there, holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. And we spotlight Derrick Henry now. Now, I'm not going to say you completely abandon the passing game, but it would really behoove them to get this running game going more. That's the identity most teams are seeking, able to establish themselves, control the game by running it, have to touch it multiple times in order to have success in this game. Yeah, as we say, yeah, that's right. As we say all the time, that sets up the passing game. I feel like a broken record with that. Listen, we can be broken records all we want. Bottom line is, lather up that big horse <laughs> and let him run. A play fake to Murray. Now Mariota. Walker with a grab. Left side. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right, that run after catch. Second down. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. It'll be a three-yard gain, and they're going to face a third down. Was that a receiver? 
<laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. On third down, Mariota, and able to find Decker. And a big hit at the end of that one. He's knocked out hard. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and 10. Again, it's Mariota. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Walker. And he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. There's a good push to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? First and ten, here's Mariota. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to a guy playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Play fake, Mariota. Looking for the end zone and nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. Well, one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. So that'll back him up five. Still second down. Murray. Murray fighting. Lost the football. But it looked like the Titans were able to recover and indeed they will keep possession of the ball. Holding offense. That one whistled against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block it'd be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty. But it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back to Tennessee after this. In just two minutes' time, don't forget we'll get you to Orlando for our halftime report. To bring it to you, who else but Larry Ridley? Now that man knows his football. Go get him, Larry.
And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. False start, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. To the air again, Mariota. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. Rashard Matthews, the intended target, and it's third down. Oh, boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because, like, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams, too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. Third and long here for Mariota. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Thomas Rawls getting ready to go here on offense. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. On first down, Wilson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended target, Doug Baldwin. That'll bring up second down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Wilson going to throw again. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. And the Seahawks on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And the Titans going to signal for a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Here's John Ryan now as he's on to punt for Seattle. He'll send this up into the Nashville skyline, and it's a good one. A well-hit ball there. 50 yards on the punt, three on the return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. And right now we spotlight DeMarco Murray. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. 
get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Pass interference. Defense. So flag for the contact. Pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. This is the correct call. Mariota on first down. Over the middle. It's incomplete. Rashard Matthews, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in. But it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was. All the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. Throwing again. Mariota on second and ten. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Titans on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. Incomplete to the tight end Walker, right side. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Brett Kern now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. He gets us away. It's a good one, drawing toward the sidelines. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. First down, this is Rolls. Fighting to get back to the goal line. I don't think he got there. He did not. Did not get back there. It's a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt. And if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Automatic first down. A 
First down throw for Mariota. Right side, there's Decker. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. Second down now after the pass completion. From the gun, Mariota. Caught here by DeMarco Murray. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Mariota now to throw on first down. Rashard Matthews here on the catch. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front as we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Titans trail at home at halftime. The Seahawks have come in and looked good as the road team and will just keep trying to play hard and maintain the lead going forward. All right, let's get it going. Here's the first half highlights. Titans with the ball midway through the first. Bennett's able to zero in on the QB here. This one ends up as a loss of six. Seahawks lined up at the five. Rawls is looking for room to run, and he'll run it in from five yards out, pushing the lead to ten. Titans have it at the seven. Rubens got the sack here. This will go as a loss of five. Hook'em horns, Brian Arakpo showing skill here to get to the QB. This will go for a loss of eight. So that'll wrap it up for us here at the EA Sports Studio. We'll head back now to Nashville for the start of the second half. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep and they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Out come the Titans now. They're down here but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Second half starts with a run by Murray. And he'll get this one up to the 26. 
Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, you know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Again, it's Murray. And he powers his way up past the 30. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Titans on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and four. Mariota. Complete to Amaro on the right side. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. It kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Here's Brett Kern now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. The Titan defense getting set now, coming back onto the field. They had the safety last time. Where does that fall as far as big momentum plays for a defense? I think it falls just under a pick six or a return fumble for a touchdown. Creating points and then getting the ball back for your team, that's huge because you've changed momentum and you've established a little level of dominance. Yeah, they showed that dominance on that last drive. Now this drive. Wilson going to give to Rawls. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. From the gun, it's Wilson. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. That good for 19 at a first down. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. and 10 it's Wilson and this is caught it's Jimmy Graham and he's brought down 19 on the last play 19 more here and another first down Jimmy Graham had a really tough injury in 2015 that ended his season but what a bounce back in 2016 how do you not get any votes for comeback player of the year I was just going to ask you that not that Jordy Nelson wasn't deserving but 65 catches 923 yards that was the highest total by a tight end in Seahawk history and I think there's a chance that both of those numbers will increase in 2017. Wilson to give to Rawls. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. 
And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. They stay on the ground. This time it's Lacey. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game. And with the lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. <laughs> He'll set up the screen to Lacey. <laughs> And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. That good for 19 at a first down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. And here comes play number six on this drive. This is Rawls. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Thomas Rawls, his second touchdown of the night. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give him a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. Walsh now for the PAT. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So that a seven-play, 80-yard drive. And it's Thomas Rawls who finishes it off with a touchdown run. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. down Mariota finding a safety valve here that's complete and they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45 that's good for 21 yards and a first down so many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game get your best players into space with the football in their hands 
That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Fresh set of downs here. They run with Murray. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They got to feel pretty good about that one. Here's the former Heisman winner. It's Derrick Henry. And down to the 44, five yards that time. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. The offense on third down tonight, they've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. But in short yardage, trying to pick up first downs, that big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. They'll try to throw now, Mariota. And he's got it, the tight end, Amaro. The Titans efficient passing on this drive. There's another first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. On first down, Murray. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. While there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window, and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. Second down, Mariota. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Able to get there and pick it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The coverage that time was unbelievable the whole way around. I mean, you've got a quarterback just standing back there in the pocket. He had all night to survey the field, and he still couldn't find anybody. And when he finally did throw it, he threw it to the other team. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. And tough starting field position here.
Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. False start offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still first down. And he's got some space here. And space opened up a bit. He's able to take this up past the 10. Nine big yards on the carry there, and it'll be second down. He had had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. After the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. A Seahawk first down, Wilson to his big target, Graham. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. here on first down. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Avery Williamson leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In yeah, a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Second down, here's Wilson. Looking for Baldwin, intercepted. It's picked up by Bryce McCain. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So a pick six there out of the nickel package. They went with five DBs. Almost becoming the base package in the NFL is the nickel. Hard to throw against. That was demonstrated one more time. A pick six going the other way. Ryan suck up on for the point after. And this is back to a five point game. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Tyler Lockett now with a return. 
And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here's Russell Wilson in the Seahawk offense now getting set to go again. He's been a good game manager. They're winning here in the third quarter, but really the ground game is where it's been at for them, hasn't it? So whatever the game plan was, you just got to focus on continuing to run the football. And really that takes the pressure off of the guy throwing it around. Doesn't have to be the focal point. Hand it off. Let him chew up the yardage in big plays. And your team's winning. The only people upset? The fantasy guys who may have started him at quarterback <laughs> in their leagues. And we'll see if they continue with the recipe of the ground game. They begin the drive with Lacey. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Now Wilson on second down toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. Now it's Wilson. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. And he's got Lockett. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. on first down and his throw is incomplete he was trying to get it to Jermaine Curse, and it's second down well too much oomph too much mustard there on that pass they really turned it loose didn't they really cut loose with that one sharp strong didn't lead to a completion though made it very difficult so the incomplete pass brings up second down Lacey gets the handoff from Wilson. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? And the Seahawks on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and seven. Here's Wilson to throw. This complete to Lockett. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Back now in Nashville. It's the Seahawks with the possession. They also have the lead here as we get set for the fourth and final quarter. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He hit his first, now this from 43. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. 
and that'll push the lead up to eight. So, Charles, I think from a defensive perspective, you have to look at that field goal there and consider it a win. You were able to keep them within a touchdown, so no question about it. That was the kind of stand that keeps you in ball games. Now after the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. Adoree Jackson on the return. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And Walker with it over the middle. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. First down, Titans gain of 12. First play of the drive in their hip pocket. Of course, the focus here has to be the touchdown of the two-point conversion. Field goals aren't going to help you. Yeah, but how about that first play of the drive? Just to get them started, nice gain, get some positive momentum going. They're on their way, and they don't have to rush. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Eric Decker, the intended target. And now it's second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. On second down, Mariota again. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Walker. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. He got 29 yards that time. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. And now a first down following that long gain. Now a play fake here on first down. That is caught at the seven. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Mariota again. That's complete right around the eight. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. Yeah. 
Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Six yards still to go here on second and goal. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Late game, that hurts. Take the touchdown off the board. No doubt about it. And this is where you make a great movie scene, right? Go in, rally the team. Okay, we lost points there. Let's get it back and go out and score again. Can he get it done? Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. Offense. And that'll set them back five. Still second down. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Second and goal. A run. It's Murray. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. It's a pickup of three, but still a little work to do on third and goal. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. Offense. That's going to set them back five yards. The offense on third down, they've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and goal. From the gun, Mariota. And the Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. Bobby Wagner, he's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He connected on his first. This time it's 39 yards away. And Suckup will put this one right through. And that'll get the lead down to five. So an interesting call there to take the three. I guess they're thinking their hands were tied, but in the fourth quarter, that field goal, it really might not help them much at all. Yeah, I mean, you still need a touchdown. Another field goal does you no good, so it'll be interesting to see what the media reaction is if the score stays where it is. Suckup now set to kick it off following the main field goal. 
This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. They start the drive on the ground with Lacey. He finds an opening past the 40. Eddie Lacey, see you later. 20. And he just falls short down at the one-yard line. A big run there by Lacey. 71 yards. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll run it. This is Procise. And he will take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. C.J. Procise taking it in from a yard out. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. Well, that was a quick hitter drive. They had the huge play to get him down near the goal line, and then they run it in. I don't know that the defense ever had a chance to catch their breath. A lot of the time now, when we see people hit big plays, and each team defines a big play their own way, 10, 15-yard gains. In this case, it was a huge gain. They often want to hurry up and go right away. Keep the momentum going, hit them again, and I think we just saw that there. The second play resulted in pay dirt. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Titans getting set to go. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. First and ten, here's Mariota. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away. But it does get away and it's second down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Second down following the incompletion. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. Caught 
right side, Davis. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Now the offense lining up first and 10. The throw is Mariota. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let's face it, that's going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. Second down here after the incomplete pass. They'll run it now out of the gun. And an alley to run. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Mariota on first down. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. That looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Second down now after the incompletion. Mariota. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. Holding offense. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? <laughs> no. No, not at all. Mariota will need a big play after the sack as the Titans come up third and long. Now Mariota. Incomplete. He had his hands on it but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And that is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Seahawks, they'll get the football back in outstanding field position. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. Go, go. 
And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Now a 10th carry here for Lacey. And a short gain down to about the 33. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and eight. From the shotgun, Wilson. He finds his man, Baldwin. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. And that pickup of a first down... That's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. He hits Baldwin right side. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Another nice pick up through the air. And I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon. But with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick out, things that they consider safe. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Second down, Wilson. Yeah, he's got it. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Wilson finding Kirsten. It's a Seattle first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. knocking on the door and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line it'll be a loss of one and that'll bring up a second and goal this is where coaches have to have spent a lot of time going over situations with their players because him getting tackled there is not the worst thing in the world you're going to run more plays right clock's going to go but his thought process is getting into the end zone. It's counterintuitive for him to actually go down in this spot. Yeah, but you, like you say, you don't want to get in the end zone too early here. No, not at all, because you may leave an opening that could come back and get you. Now Wilson looking to throw on second down. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. That ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. And this offense on third down today, not quite 50%. Four for nine. They're looking at a third and goal here. They'll run it with Lacey. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Eddie Lacy taking it in from two yards out. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. 
Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up. Never even got to it. And that one makes this a 19-point game. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's finished off by a touchdown run coming from Eddie Lacy. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. What a spin. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave him great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. Mm -hmm. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. <laughs> so now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. First down, Mariota. And Matthews has it right side. And he is leveled. Knocked down hard. That one goes for 24 yards. Looks like this will be the last play before the two-minute warning. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. So the offense has it first and ten. Now Mariota. He's got it to Matthews, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. A first down throw for Mariota. That is caught inside the five. And they do get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. That one goes for 24 yards. Mariota. It'll be a two-yard gain, and it'll be second and goal. It's a five-receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. Now a second down throw for Mariota. incomplete. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost. 
And now there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Yeah, you could almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. They gotta have six here. It's third and goal. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. offense. So that one will be accepted. They gotta have six here. It's third and goal. Here's Mariota. And that is incomplete. I'm gonna need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, Incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Desperation time. Mariota on fourth down. Got a man, and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Janu Smith from six yards away. And the Titans are able to close the gap just a bit. And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game, they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. Suck up for the extra point. And they're able to cut the deficit to 12. So that drives seven plays in length. And the result in the end, a Titans touchdown. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And the Seahawks, looks like they've recovered, they have. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. They'll run. This is Lacey. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And the Titans going to signal for a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Second down and four. Again, it's Lacey. 
And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Now another timeout here called by the Titans. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This is going to be third and 13. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. And well, they could just run this clock out, but here is the field goal unit on fourth down. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game. They also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Nashville, good night, everybody.